I just was coming with you guys, uh, with you tonight with a message from the Holy Spirit that uh, has been revealed to me. I've been praying and just meditating on um, the scripture being the Word of God or not, and um, I've come to the conclusion that it's not the Word of God. I have a whole video about that, um, but I want to be clear that I do believe the scripture still has a purpose and a place. Um, for those who don't have the Holy Spirit, it is... Um, it is a way for them to learn about Jesus and, uh, and to learn the character of God and who he was with uh, the Jewish people in the Old Testament. Um, I, also, I also have seen um, that it, it is used to, to keep us um, on a track. It's like, a, it's like an accountability tool. It's, it's to reproof and to admonish and correct and, and um, to have a guide. And so I think we have to be careful um, in our message that the Bible is not the word of God. The Bible has been used as an idol. Um, if you're going to the Bible before you're going to God on your knees in meditation and seeking him in the spirit, then you are making the Bible an idol. You are effectively making the Bible your God. But there is a way, there is a use for the Bible. Um, and it's, I don't believe it's all bad. Um, but I want to be really clear that the scriptures are useless to us without the Holy Spirit. Um, and with the Holy Spirit, we don't need them. So we're back to this paradox. Um it's like Jesus said, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have life, um, but you don't. <laughs> They're not alive and they never will be. There's a thing about being born again, and it was very confusing to the men that Jesus told it about. Um, they couldn't figure out, born again, what do you mean? What, how could I possibly be born again? And he said, you must, you must be born of the Spirit. You must die to your flesh. And if we're doing that, um, and we're being filled with the Holy Spirit, then... We don't need any other teacher. We don't need to go back to the Bible. Um, and I, I can see how this can get really complicated in a body where you have people who are confused and, and they say, well, we have to go back to the Bible to be able to verify what you're saying. But that's where we have to come into one accord under the Holy Spirit. And if we're not doing that, then we will forever be a kingdom divided. And um, that's why it is such a small remnant today that have the Holy Spirit because he's a gentleman. He's not coming to those who are willing to go to, the, to, go to a book for their spiritual nourishment or those who are willing to go to church for their spiritual nourishment. If you're going there and you are not nourishing others with the Holy Spirit within you, but you're being nourished, then you have to wonder um, where you're at in your walk. And um, if we're if we're nourishing others, then we will be nourished by that. See, so it's like a circle that when we love and we give and we give what the Holy Spirit has given us, we have to we have to give that. That's why it says you'll find salvation. That's why Jesus said that through the blood of the lamb and the words of your testimony. Because if you don't go out and testify about what God has done in your life, then it's useless. If it doesn't help anybody else, um, then then how is that good? How is that how is that growing the body? How is that working? How is that being the salt and light or the hands and feet of Jesus? We have to really think about it. Salvation is not just uh, like Jesus didn't die just to save me. He died to save all those who were called. And if I'm given a piece of his spirit in my heart, but I don't use that to be a purpose in someone else's life, then what good am I? If I'm not... If I'm not constantly trying to seek ways that I can serve others, then how, what good am I? Um, we have to really check ourselves. We have to self-reflect. We have to constantly be on our knees praying for discernment and praying for spiritual wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Because if we don't have that, all this other stuff is use useless. It's just useless. It's of nothing. It's for vanity. It's idolatry. And it's a sin. We have to be really careful because we walk a fine line. Um, and when we're using the name Jesus and we're representing him, we have to really be true to what he told us to do and what he still is telling us to do today. People get caught up in all these promises of God. You know, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. If God told David something and David wrote that down and then 2,000 years later or 4,000 years later, I read that scripture, that promise does not necessarily apply to me. Now, it might show me the character of God, but God has promises for me right now in my life on a daily basis. He is here now. I don't have to go back and read history to meet God or to see what he can do. Um, all I have to do is be a willing vessel. All I have to do is repent and be obedient to his Holy Spirit. And then he can work and do wondrous things through me and in my life and for all those around me. And it will be reflected in everything. Um, and that's why... I've experienced a personal falling away. 
I have three siblings that I don't speak to anymore. Um, only one of them has come back to me in the last year, and we've now started to reform a relationship. But they have all told me they want nothing to do with me because I'm a crazy Christian. I'm radical. I'm obsessed with Jesus, and they can't stand it. Um, and it is a, a, a dividing line that will come into your life. And he said that, and, and brother will hate uh, sister, and mother and child will, will forsake each other. Um you know, but there's also, there's also, we have to be careful because he says there will be those who will kill you and think they are doing me a service. And um, we can't go and commune with those people. We have to have discernment. We have to have discernment. I cannot stress this enough. If you are unsure about something in your life or you don't know which way to go or what to do, if you should wait on the Lord or if you should decide something, let me just tell you, you have to pray for discernment. Without that, you will be lost and just out in the wilderness with no clue what you're doing. Um, the, the discernment that God has given me has brought me so far that I can say, I can spot people out a mile away and say they have the Spirit of God or they don't. Or they're seeking God and, and they want to find Him. They're on the path to finding Him. Um, and they just need a little bit of guidance. Or they just need someone to tell them not to be, not to be tempted by fear or lust or the world or just accountability that's where we have to have a gathering and if you're blessed enough to find a gathering of people who are like-minded then don't don't take that for granted it's very hard to find in this world um i've been to so many churches and i've been gravely disappointed and just left there shaking my head in tears for the people who just so certainly believe that they are saved and they have failed to realize salvation is a journey not a destination jesus said it very plainly only he who endures until the end will be saved. Your salvation is not guaranteed. It is not something that um, you can just say a sinner's prayer and boom, you're there. You're going to make it to heaven. That's not how it works. He said it was a narrow path. He said that for a reason, okay? And he's still saying that today. Narrow is the way, but wide is the road to perdition. So I would just encourage everybody to pray for discernment. I would encourage everybody to focus on the Holy Spirit. I would encourage you guys to... Um, to just really meditate on and, and wait and listen for what God is saying to you right now. You know, um, I've said the scriptures are not bad, but God is speaking to us all the time. His spirit is being poured out. We are in very troubled times. We have to cling to the truth. It is our lifeline. It's, it's the only thing that we can have hope in. The spirit of truth. The truth that Jesus came and died to give us. Yeah. He came and died to give us the spirit of the living God. God Be blessed. Pla praise God. He is alive. Praise alive. you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray you're all blessed.